video in which I show you how to finish off making a bunker escape hatch for the man who was everything except a bunker escape hatch and um, yeah so it's not quite done I've got the sounds but this is where we're at and the lights are now working as desired it's hard to see and um, yeah so watch on and I'll show you how to get here uh, the first part is essential viewing before you get in right bye okay so what was missing uh, before was something to update set trapdoor angle so this takes as an input trapdoor angle. It's a little better behaved to um no, that's not the right thing. Better to have it as a function than to be manipulating the variables directly. If I go back to this thing, let's turn that off. Um, rather than setting that directly, let's uh, set trapdoor angle. Play. This should hopefully give us what we want. Here's another place where I went wrong. Um, this will always open the trapdoor. Uh, a few ways to do this too, but if the target is greater equals doesn't make any sense. If the target is greater than the state. speed to be positive. Gonna need to move this around. Otherwise yuck, sorry. Gonna need to get the negative version of it. So, fingers crossed. That shouldn't be happening. So there we go. Oh, I like it. So that speed's probably about right. The lever needs to go a bit faster. Oh. And if you change your mind halfway through. That changes. Nice. Okay, let's move on to something else. The lights. Let's get them working. Um, right. So I'll do a tiny bit of tweaking. We don't really need it, but I'm going to um, add a property powered up which is true by default and I've also added I think I mentioned this bit to in the constructor to update the state at the beginning 
which solves the problem of it being in a funny state. Um, I want to make a new function to update the lights and the first thing I will do is to get the power light. Um, I think is visible. No. Is to simply do this. And I probably want to uh, do this to affect all the other lights not love the lights too. Um, I don't want to do it every tick. I think I need to add a test at the end. If they equal <coughs> then update the lights let's see That nearly worked. I think I shouldn't have changed these to not affects world. Okay, so I've now fixed the problems. Um, first of all, let's see powering up that works as intended. Um, I added an update lights in the constructor, and in my update lights bit. I was checking whether or not the lever had finished moving, but what of course I need to check is whether the trapdoor's finished moving. So, um, using these bits of logic, nothing too crazy there, um, it now looks a bit like this. Here it goes, starts opening, and then it finishes, so it's green. So that is basically working as I want. Perfect. But I want to make the lights light. Um, these lights are all very well and good, and when I say all very well and good I mean they're not very good. Um, they need to be a bit more subtle. Let's at least dull that down a bit. Um, right, but I'm going to need some more uh, stuff. I'm going to need some textures. So what I have here is um, the material for the lights themselves and this texture um, I have to find the alpha. So the alpha kind of dictates the metallic property but it gives me a useful um, mask for light effects. So I'm going to go back to this and what I need to do 
I'm thinking, thinking, thinking is have an emissive thing. So I need a vector parameter. Um, which will be go away. The emissive light and that plug straight in there and I think so that's no good but oh, I forgot I need to mask with this and it'll be one minus Bob's your uncle. So those are now red lights. Um, yeah, not sure about that. Um, you can. I'm just going to take it off screen because it's a parameter. I can make it a lot brighter. Uh, I do like super emissive things because they start to have their own glow. You don't really need to have the lights on for it to start glowing. That's a bit too much. It's a bit too much. Maybe two would be fine. But you lose a bit of the nice rich redness. Um, yeah, so by default let's leave that off. I may even get rid of these lights altogether. A dynamic material instance. And we just want to have some copies of those. And in our construction I just want to make this a sequence just to keep it a bit neater. And I'm going to duplicate that again. Um, default which is what we want and we want to do that uh, wait what And we do it four times and store the result. <coughs> Might as well try and be vaguely structured about this. So the controller box. set material oh, do you know what? I'll do another sequence and power light material
So I think that's all we need apart from the mesh being set up. Alright, I need to jump into Lightwave, find my controller. Here we have one material. Need to do a little bit of um, housekeeping. Okay, so let's export that, re import. Okay, so we now have separate materials for each of these things. So one is open, so let's just go put that in. Two is opening. Let's go pop that in. Uh, four is power. Okay, so that's now set up. All we need to do is change our light updates. And we want to Set that and remind ourselves of emissive light. Terrible name. Um, I could make it a proper variable, but not going to bother. Um, Oh, let's put it up there. So false is nothing, true would be mm, ideally Oh, why did it work? Okay. Here is my final um, version of my update lights routine. So I am not using these lights at the moment, but I am turning them on and off uh, depending on various bits of logic. Uh, this determines whether or not the trapdoor is opening. And here I select the colour of off or the colour of the lamp and scale it by a new variable lamp brightness and I do these two things for each of the lamps in turn and uh, yeah that gives you the results you'll see in a second. So I've made a few little changes on the aesthetic side which I'll very quickly run through. I have changed the texture of the box to give it a bit more detail. I have taken a detail texture from the starter content and a normal and I've used them with a scaled up uh, texture coordinate. I have multiplied that with the texture, added a brightness parameter to correct for the darkening that causes. I've used a power exponent to make it a bit more contrasty and I've also scaled the roughness a bit just to give it more of a a surface detail. I have changed the indicator lamp to add a minimum glow for the emissive light so that the ring around the lamp glows a bit when the lamp is glowing. That's also to compensate for the fact that I have turned off those lights because they just didn't work. Though I think what I'll do is turn them into spotlights facing outwards so if anybody's standing by the control panel they will get an illumination from the lamps that are lit which might look quite nice. 
I've changed that texture to a non-world coordinate one so it uh, moves properly and I've gone into the texture itself to just make it a bit clearer, add some borders and I went into the model to increase the size of the lamps because those are the bits that, are, that look the best and um, I sped up the lever, I can't remember if I said that, so uh, I don't know quite what it's doing come back so that's closer at least to how I'd like it to be and there's the final lamp so yeah that's alright okay I've changed all the point lights for spotlights which are low intensity uh, small attenuation radius and quite a wide beam and this is the effect which is pretty much the desired effect a little bit too much perhaps but uh, it should be quite subtle at a distance but any players that come past will be illuminated hopefully next up we want to make the hay lever grabbable um, I had a few problems here and I talked and talked and it'll be easy just to show you what I've done now I fixed it the problem was that I I had turned off the normal player character so none of this normal stuff worked and the input didn't work so um, I also made the on component end overlap event um, for the trigger which is this thing so it's just a collision thing um, so not you've got to pick the right thing before you add the event um, and when you begin the overlap it checks it's the player uh, I don't think that bit's necessary, but I, I'm paranoid. And it enables the input or disables the input. And on the event play, I disable it on the assumption that the player is not within the distant, within reach of one when you start the game. I then set a variable saying whether the player is in range or not, which I also set in the construction script. And then I call this update handle material which changes the material of the lever to either be the normal material or a selectable material and to make the selectable material I copied the normal one and added this bit where you use the time as an input to a sine curve you set the period to be something appropriate mess with the output range and multiply it by the texture and that's it you get a glowing texture and the effect of that is that when you start the handle's normal handle, when you get within range, it starts to glow, showing that it can be activated. You press the grab key and it activates. But if you're outside the range, nothing happens. And just to finish off that explanation, um, so the overlap events of the trigger sort of gate the detection of keys on and off um, and I created an event for a key for the grab key which then calls the code that used to be on the overlap and I've done that by going to the project settings and going to input and I added an action mapping which I called grab key which is the name of the event I mapped it to G, I can remap it to F very easily. Um, so if you're doing a project as a whole rather than a mod add-on, this is a nice way to do it because you can easily change that, it's not hard-coded. Um, the alternative is just to grab the key event, um, but that's slightly more hard-coded, slightly more... Um, yeah, that's not so good, but uh, that might be a better idea for a mod, say. Um, yeah, so that's now selectable. Next up we want to make the hay lever grabbable. Um, I had a few problems here and I talked and talked and it'll be easy just to show you what I've done. Now I fixed it. The problem was that I had turned off the normal player character so none of this normal stuff worked and the input didn't work. So um, I also made the on component end overlap event um, 
for the trigger, which is this thing. So it's just a collision thing. Um, so not you've got to pick the right thing before you add the event. Um, and when you begin the overlap, it checks it's the player. Uh, I don't think that bit's necessary, but I, I'm paranoid. And it enables the input or disables the input. And on the event play, I disable it on the assumption that the player is not within the distant within reach of one when you start the game. I then set a variable saying whether the player is in range or not, which I also set in the construction script. And then I call this update handle material, which changes the material of the lever to either be the normal material or a selectable material. And to make the selectable material, I copied the normal one and added this bit where you use the time as an input to a sine curve, you set the period to be something appropriate, mess with the output range, and multiply it by the texture, and that's it, you get a glowing texture. And the effect of that is that when you start the handle's normal handle, when you get within range, it starts to glow, showing that it can be activated. You press the grab key and it activates. But if you're outside the range, nothing happens. And just to finish off that explanation, um, so the overlap events of the trigger sort of gate the detection of keys on and off. Um, and I created an event for a key, for the grab key, which then calls the code that used to be on the overlap. And I've done that by going to the project settings and going to input. And I added an action mapping, which I called grab key, which is the name of the event. I mapped it to G, I can remap it to F very easily. Um, so if you're doing a project as a whole rather than a mod add-on, this is a nice way to do it because you can easily change that, it's not hard-coded. Um, the alternative is just to grab the key event, um, but that's slightly more hard-coded, slightly more... Um, yeah, that's not so good, but uh, that might be a better idea for a mod, say. Um, yeah, so that's now selectable. One other thing to note is that each actor has input properties um, which can block the input uh, or auto-receive input. So make sure that's set OK for everything you're using if you're having problems picking up key events. Next up we want some sound. Um, so this is the function called when the lever has switched. So let's go there. Oh, we're going to have to add some sound variables. Sound lever activated. And you want the type um, sound base, which is more, which has either cues or waves, is handy there. Uh, for some reason I'd like to put these in a separate category of sounds, no particular reason. And let's go look at my sounds. Okay, I have a load of sound effects in a separate directory. Um, I'm going to bring this into uh, just there for now. So that's a sound wave. I'll just create a cue from it, and I'm going to just put a standard um, beginning prefix. There's not much to do with that. Some sounds you might want to add some things. In fact, I will add a modulator, which basically randomizes pitch and the volume. So that's a useful thing to do, so that if you keep clicking on something it won't make the same sound each time. So that's my first sound which I'll put in here. And um, yeah. 
place sound at location because I want it to be attached to the lever. Get world location and the sound would be that. And you can change a few other things. Um, I have some standard attenuations. Ambient near, no low pass filter. Ambient, uh, that sounds reasonable. So let's try that out. So, working as planned. Righto, I think we've now come to the end. So I have found some sound samples that work-ish. Um, and I'm editing the function where I set the trapped or target state. I've added a new boolean variable to indicate when the trapped or is transitioning. A bit of logic to um, only set that to be true when we are actually moving from one state to another. Um, and then I do play a sound for the start of the cycle and then I play a sound which is for the looping sound during the cycle. So this one is more uh, uh, straightforward. Um, first of all checks that we have a trapdoor we're linked to. If not, let's avoid any unpleasantness. Um, then we check we've got a sound. So the sounds can be left blank, though I have now filled them all with something. Um, if there is a sound, then play it at the new socket I've made. No, that's not new socket. At the piston pivot on the trapdoor, because these sounds are sort of squeaky sounds and the like. So that's where they'd probably be closest to. And uh, so it checks if the target is that would be fully open. If so, play the open sound. If it's fully closed, play that sound. If it's been interrupted mid-cycle, it won't play any sound because the state will be neither one nor zero. If the and then it checks to see there's a sound sample for the opening loop. And this one's different um, because we want it to stop when the uh, trapdoor stops and because it's looping that's a bit tricky so I've got a different call here rather than play sound at location this is spawn sound at location which returns the sound which I store in a variable I've made and first of all we check if it exists beforehand if it does destroy it and start again and then later on when the process has finished it comes to, so the tick function goes to moving the trapdoor if the trapdoor is at its target state then we set it to be no longer transitioning, update the lights to make the yellow one either green or red and then we do the sounds. So if there is that looping sound we destroy it and that stops the sound and then we play a sound for coming to the end of the cycle either coming shut or coming open and I want to play it at different places so if it slams shut I want to play the sound at the end of the trapdoor where it would bang into the the frame. If it's gone fully open I want to play it at the piston pivot where it'll be more of a squeaky sound. Um, nothing rocket science there, I just had to fix a few things with how I did the state updates. Um, and so I think we have pretty much, sorry my cat's now uh, attacking me. Um, are you gonna make a noise at the microphone? There you go. That's Bella, um, or Bellend as uh, she sometimes is. Right. Oh God! Thank you very much, cat. Really helpful. Oh yeah, and more. All right. Sorry. How about you get off there and go somewhere else? Right. So the finished product. Let's see how it works.
so the sound work could be better, but um, here we are. Thank you for your patience. Now one thing I've not covered is replication, and you know what, I'm not going to run out of time. Another time. Bye!